Rewriting the narrative with common sense. This is The Daily Story with your host, Oriel. So it's been a while since I've done some film. And I built my entire career off of YouTube uh, back in the day and Facebook when the algorithms weren't uh, holding us back. And so the rebirth of my uh, expression, my character, my downloads into reality is through this, The Daily Story. And so we're going to explore the ongoing themes in our world, big and small, past, present, and future, that apply to here and now. Reality manifest. Let's direct it. And so you'd say it's a co-participatory show, and sometimes it might just be monologuing, expressing my reality, my story. Hopefully it's entertaining. And interviewing others, other free thinkers, intelligent folk, people who might just see the world with a unique eye. Whatever it goes, we're gonna explore it here, and ultimately it's about keeping an open mind because there's so much going on in the world right now. It's topsy-turvy, we all know. I could go on and on about it. <sighs> Story short, we're moving into a world that we can never before imagine. And so, let us take a step to where we are showing up with the narrative, not just someone behind a screen writing a story telling you this is the way it is, this is how you should think, this is the way you should perceive, but actually us taking initiative. You know, there's all these false flags. You go all the way back to 1898 with the Spanish-American War and the mine that broke, blew up the USS Maine in Havana Harbor, and by the way, I am from Maine, uh, supposedly it, it, uh, it, you know, it blew, blew into the ammunition's deck and the whole, whole boat blew up. What they actually discovered it was the other way around. And right when that happened, we were ready to invade Philippines simultaneously. The thing is, when you look at World War I, World War II, Vietnam War, the Iraqi War, Libya with Gaddafi, you know, the list goes on. The amount of influence that has shifted the narrative around war, and I'm just talking war, that's just one subject, is profound. Now we could even get into science with Lumiferous Ether Theory, in which uh, Faraday, Maxwell, and Tesla were major proponents of. And then it was hijacked by relativity and quantum theory. It's a whole new world of science we stepped into when we let go of back. Because if we actually understood in 1899, when Nikola Tesla in Colorado Springs did his research, the work he did there in understanding nonlinear transformers could change the entire landscape of not only energy systems, but telecommunications as well. But that's been suppressed, and that's been buried. And on this show, we're gonna talk about that because one of my personal faves is free energy. I worked in the movement for quite a while. I sort of took a step back, things got a little intimidating, but uh, I decided to drop out of college to go uh, pursue vortex-based mathematics and study alongside uh, on and off with Marco Rodin. Now, if we had to, there's so many things, there's just so many, so I'm gonna con continually uh, coagulate it into some form of substance, not get too lost on tangents. That sort of happens when you're polymath. There's just a lot of ideas bouncing around all the time. And so uh, another hijacking, we can talk about germ theory and terrain theory. And well, that's really relevant with what's happening now. And also with lumiferous ether, when you understand the weaponization of EM technology and the relationship of EM fields with, with supposedly viral uh, organisms. That narrative was hijacked, at least in my opinion, and many other people's opinions, and that's what I also mean by being open-minded here on the show, because there's the opinion right here of myself, and I could be firm in it, I could be confident. Someone might interpret it as cocky or egotistical, but this is what you call someone embodied in their truth. Whether that is a truth or not, it is their truth, and that's how I'm gonna speak forth on this show. And so, where do we wanna go? Well, we could ground it to the present moment. We got, we got Russia and Ukraine. So I grew up with Russians and Ukrainians at the dinner table and, and Moldovians and Bulgarians and Hungarians and S Slovakians, the list goes on and on, um, in terms of Slavic people. Uh, and, you know, this sort of hits home at the same time I've been watching RT for, for years. And I like to like, what inspires me also making this show is crosstalk and Kaiser Report. Sadly, Kaiser Report just fell off the map with the invasion of, of Ukraine and they decided to step away from RT. But the interesting thing happening with Russia and Ukraine is the extreme of the narrative. We had the extreme of the narrative with the pandemic. But where it's even going in terms of the most blatant, atrocious things, and a former UN inspector actually on RT Today said, 
uh, and it was the most intriguing thing, and it's, and it's, in my opinion, it's absolutely true, is that Russia is conducting a special mer- military operation where Ukraine is acting like it's total war. The mainstream media is acting like it's total war while the opponent is not playing that game. There's two different worlds entirely unfolding. And the thing is, the ramifications of what that proper can, propaganda can do is profound. For all we know, it could lead to a U.S. draft and your brothers and sisters could be sent off to war. That's a little bit of an extreme of a thing, but, the, but part of the thing with even saying that here in America, as I'm, I'm based in Northern California, most people aren't used to, or even at all, the nature of war. When was the last time war was on our, our doorstep? And it's, it's been quite a while, if anything, since the American Civil War. What happens if you bring Syria here? What happens if you bring Venezuela here? What happens if you bring these supposed dictatorships in our world, whether you see them that way or not? But the chaos unfolding, such as Yemen, here with drone strikes, all of a sudden it becomes a reality. And then you start to realize that your 50 plus percent of your taxes is funding that war machine and creating that chaos. And now you might be experiencing that chaos instead of disassociating from it. The truth is, war is a horrible thing. At the same time, I've come into my own self-realization of being a proponent for nonviolent communication, and just is just nonviolence in general. At the same time, there is a profound notion in standing your ground. You know, I haven't I haven't got into or started, I haven't started a fight in my adult life at all. And the last time I, I took an aggressive aggressive measure was at a simker who bullied me for like two years straight all the time. And then one day I just punched him in gym class when he was bullying me, gave him a blade nose. The gym teacher saw it. He came over. He sent the guy to the nurse's office, didn't say anything. I didn't get in trouble. Bullying ended. Since that point, I've never had to initiate a fight. I've never had to engage in violence. At the same time, it was that moment of violence that put an end to the bullying. And so am I here saying, oh, we need to pick up arms? No, but I'm going to remind you of the Second Amendment and what it stands for. And I'd rather have a gun um, and not need it than not have a gun and need one. It's a simple truth. And you can apply that concept even without guns in, in many other sort of situations. You know, in my workshop, I have a bunch of tools and I have all these miscellaneous things. And sometimes you're like, well, why do you have all this little stuff? It's not like hoarding. It's, it's, it's more of like artistic materials and, and tools sometimes are specialty tools for a specific purpose. Well, I'd rather have that specialty tool and not need it than need that specialty tool and not have it. And so there's a lot of backwards thinking that's been happening on the earth plane. And I want to bring attention to it. I want to bring attention to what really is at the essence of, you can say, common sense. Thomas Paine, as as many probably know, I don't even have to repeat it, who you know, has so gracefully left us with the saying, uh, common sense ain't that common. And for me, it's a sad truth. You know, I'm the type of intellect who gets depressed from their, not everyone else being intellectual versus being like, hey, I'm the smartest one in the room. I would love for the world around me to engage higher levels of critical thinking. I think it would be the most beautiful thing when we could all start to see what is really in front of us, that the manipulation and the games can affect us in that way, that you can look in the mirror and know who you are and not the projections onto you. What I think has happened in this world from the education system dumbing us down from the toxins in the air, the food and the water, you name it, actually literally dumbing us down is atrocious. I think humans are inherently good. I also think we're extremely intelligent. And I don't think it's just by a grace of God, like, oh, that person's smart and that person's smart. That person can critically think, oh, he just has free thoughts across the board and he can't be bound by anything. You know, I wasn't you know, the most open-minded thinker as, you know, as a, a young adult. In many ways I was, in other ways I wasn't. I was still conforming to the system. Well, 
I want to inspire you. I want to empower you. Because you, my friend, are our godsend. Not, not us over-externalizing, putting faith on some god over there or some hero over there. You. Yeah, I'm talking to you. The person sitting there who wants to cultivate that inner truth to express it there out in any way, shape, or form without the censorship, without the judgment. So you can just express what you feel that you know is your truth and that there is no fear in place that can hold that back. And so I want to invite everyone to continue on this journey with myself here on The Daily Story as we write our truth and our perspective of our world around us how we so choose because we can interpret what's happening in the past all the way up until the present moment at the same time we are casting spells with our words in every moment setting the tone for how the world is unfolding so let us do that let us play the music that we want to hear because what's on the radio right now sucks balls it ain't that fun so much of the creative establishment is going down the drain and tech is being utilized for ways that are just so not cool and so, you know, the pen can indeed be mightier than the sword. And so I'm going to wield my words to convey to you the articulation of all that is in simplicity without dumbing it down, but also allowing you to receive it with harmonious understanding. For that interpretation of what is being conveyed from me to you, that interpretation is then the perspective evolved from this one right here. And so how about we create some synergy in the evolution of that perspective to where we all wanna go in this. And so thank you, my friends. It's been quite an adventure, a voyage, a journey to here right now, and let's continue to take a step up. Maybe we can throw some homework and make it like an odyssey. And so, Thank you, everyone who is showing up in this moment to meet the tyranny, the totalitarianism, the unfolding of the apocalypse, which is such a beautiful definition of apocalypse, by the way. It's not like Armageddon, they're two different things. It's they're revealing to a few. So I'm speaking to the few out there who are revealing to themselves who they are and how they want to show up. Let us create real, tangible magic by blending the worlds of our logic and our intuitive selves together to engage this moment wholeheartedly in totality. So thank you for watching The Daily Story. This is your host, Oriel, signing off. Stay free, be open.